There's all kinds of awards on the line each week in NASCAR, but without question, the tastiest is found at New Hampshire Motor Speedway. Survive the magic mile and a giant-sized lobster will be on your plate. Oh, he's biting the claw. You're 150 laps away from dinner. But first, your appetizer is on us. We're serving a new edition of Around the Track, and it starts now. Illusions, no tricks, but some of these drivers might have to pull out some sorcery if they're going to pull out a dub at the Magic Mile. Welcome to this week's edition of Around the Track. I'm Carla Gebhardt. He is Gabe McDonald. And for a second straight week, we're going short track racing. You can bet on every team being hungry for the win because the winner gets a big old crustacean. This week, <laughs> we've invited the Rookie of the Year contender to hang with us. Carson Osevar is in Garage Confidential, and the Athletics' Jordan Bianchi is also making his triumphal return right here to the studio. Plus, we answered the question, does NASCAR have a superstar? But first things first, let's get to Loudoun, New Hampshire. And this New England tour stop is really celebrated by a lot of the drivers. This is the one of the more flat tracks on the circuit where track position and fuel mileage is key. Now think of a similar style of race to what we saw at Gateway a couple of weeks ago. It's going to be all about restarts because passing here is a premium. And if we do see a wreck, it won't be just one car. Expect a big old pile up here. Drivers won't have a good view of the track either because of how flat it is. New Hampshire, though, is a great test en route to the playoffs because while it is a fan favorite, the drivers, eh, not so much. Magic mile. Magic mile. I am not looking forward to it. Last year was a debacle, so um, <laughs> it was a nightmare that I would love to forget. So hopefully this year's better. You know, the, the groove moved all the way up against the wall, I think, in, in both ends, and that was a, a huge change. I think it's more a factor of the uh, PJ1 or whatever they sprayed and the modified races and how the track has aged and it is the next gen car. Uh, of course, the, the shifting there makes a big difference kind of change the dynamics of the track. Um, and so it'll, it'll continue to change, uh, you know, a pretty safe bet. I, you know, had a lot of success there leading up to the Cup Series. And then even my first like two years in the Cup Series, relative to where I was running, you know, other tracks, I thought I ran pretty well there. But it just seems like with our current team, we just haven't really been very good there. And we just have to figure out what that is. And um, hopefully go through a lot of notes this week and kind of have something, you know, comparable to go run there. Let's go ahead and do New Hampshire by the numbers. It's point race number 18 of the 2024 season. And we'll go 318 total miles. Of course, 301 laps over this mile track. If you're counting, 1.058 miles to be exact. There's little to no banking here. We're flat in New England. One degree on the front in the back stretch, two to seven in the terms. The old timers, they know how to run here. Three drivers have 30 or more starts in New Hampshire, including Kyle Busch, who leads them all. This will be his 33rd cup start in New Hampshire. Another guy in that club is also the active wins leader here in New Hamlin. It's tied with Bush with three wins apiece. Brad Kosowski and Joey Logano each have two in New Hampshire. And of course, whoever does win this weekend gets the biggest piece of that $7.8 million purse. And of course, that lobster as well. All right, let's, so let's go ahead and welcome in the Athletics and Dirty Mo Media's Jordan Bianchi making your epic return to <laughs> around the track this weekend. And we're starting with the very important questions of is there a lobster bigger than the one that they hand out in victory lane at this race? I don't know if there is. I'd like to see it. I'd like to eat it, actually. <laughs> they should send some our way. It's a great prize, though, that's for sure. It it's is. good to put some butter on that, too. But, of course, we got to get to six active full-time cup drivers that have won and gotten that lobster. One of those, it's mainly the veterans, though. Yep. Kyle Busch, Joe Logano, Denny Hamlin, Brad Koslowski, so many guys. And, of course, you have Christopher Bell. He's the only guy under the age of yeah. 30 that has a win here. But he's done in cup in Xfinity. Why does experience matter so much at this track? This is actually a really tough track to navigate. A lot of drivers don't think that, or a lot fans don't think that necessarily but it's really hard on the brakes track position matters here you have to manage your tires a lot of long green flag runs and so this is a, a track that really can be punishing if you make mistakes if you get behind it's really hard to make up veterans tend not to make a lot of mistakes therefore they put themselves in a position to capitalize that's why you see, see the same group of guys tend to win here a lot they don't really love it here though why is that because it's hard to pass and it's challenging <laughs> and qualifying matters a lot. And if you get behind, it's really hard to make up. And with this car, and we've heard it so much, with this next gen car on the you know short track package, it can be very difficult to make moves. And if you get behind, you can be in for a long day. And, 
and we've really talked about this before, especially early on in the season, but that short track package. I mean, NASCAR has really tried everything with packages, tires, even um, some of the rule changes. So what is missing here? What could you do different? Well, probably tire wear and they're getting there a little bit. We saw last week in Iowa, really great race. We saw some tire wear there. We saw one of the best races on a short track with this next gen car really since the inception of this car in 2022. So we're getting there progressively, maybe not as much as people want, but we're slowly inching that way and getting better. But tire wear is the big thing. More tire wear creates more comers and goers, really puts an onus kind of on those veteran drivers, like we said, to, to make moves and put themselves in position. So one day we'll get there hopefully soon. And we got to talk about obviously, you know, New England being a hotbed for racing talent yep. because we know the sport has roots sure. in the South, but of course you have guys like Joey Logano, even Ryan Priest who are making homecomings this weekend. What do those 22 and 41 teams have to do to be able to make this homecoming a little bit more special for them, get a win? I mean, Logano really just keep doing what he's doing. I know he's had a rough start to the year, but he continues to get better and better. You look at the speed they've had in their race car the last few weeks. They won the all-star race, dominated that. His teammate won. Uh, Austin Cedric won at Gateway, very similar to New Hampshire. Ryan Blaney won in Iowa. There's some characteristics there. Just keep doing what you're doing if you're Joey Logano. Ryan Priest, you're gonna have to take some, you're gonna have to take some swings and kind of get lucky and maybe, you know, kind of a Hail Mary, if you will. They haven't had a lot of speed in their race cars this year. This is a really, really good track, though. He's won here before in other forms of racing. If you're going to get that Hail Mary victory out of nowhere, this is a great place for him to do that. And he really needs that, too, because his job status for yeah. next year right. is very much up in the air. Absolutely. And there's something else we want you to weigh in on, Jordan. But not before you hear from the drivers. And it's a simple question. Does NASCAR have or even need a superstar like the days of Dale and Richard Petty? Our friend Kevin Conley takes us to the garage to find out. Richard Petty, Dale Earnhardt, and Jeff Gordon, three drivers on NASCAR's version of Mount Rushmore. Three vastly different personalities, but megastars in their own right, who shared a common trait, winning. So was that why they were considered superstars? Well, Jeff and Dale and Richard were all superstars from what they did here. Um, so I think that really answers your own question. Petty, Earnhardt, and Gordon were the dominant driver of their time, often winning double-digit races in a single season and contending for championships. With the current level of parity in the sport, that type of success is harder to achieve. Times changed. Times are different. Uh, you don't have guys winning 10 races anymore. This car doesn't allow that. So how do you separate yourself? How do you make yourself different from the rest of, of the drivers who are all really good at what they do? And, you know, it starts with success on the racetrack. Denny Hamlin has used social media and his podcast to build his brand. But like Blaney, he believes it's all about winning. So I still think, you know, eight, nine win seasons are, are very possible. But I don't know if it's you're going to grow any superstars currently you know, the way it's going. I, I think that's just really, really tough. Fans have changed too, with so many options for their attention. For whatever reason, I, I'm not sure what it is, but you have the diehard fans of NASCAR, of the Jeff Gordon, Dale Earnhardt, Rusty Wallace, Terry Labonte, Mark Martin, um, Harry Gant, you name it. I don't feel like we were able to transition a lot of the fans that were fans of those drivers of the names that I just mentioned into a William Byron fan or into a Kyle fan or into whoever. You know, they kind of probably went away and just stopped following as much. Could that be a marketing issue? And does that fall on NASCAR? The Formula One is, is huge. Yeah, they've this, the industry has done a really good job of promoting their drivers and making them superstars. And I don't know what to do here to make us that way, but uh, it would be cool. It would be great. It would, it, would, it would be awesome for the sport. It would be awesome for all of our brands. Chase Elliott is NASCAR's reigning most popular driver. It's hard for me to speak for, you know, the, the sport as a whole or what's right or what's wrong or what's the fix. Who, say, you know, who says there's a problem? And I don't know what the whole kick is right now about needing a superstar. I mean, we're all superstars. Every driver. NASCAR, the teams and the drivers will need to all get on the same page, which is the only way to solve complex issues. All right, Jordan. So we heard from some big drivers there, some champions. Obviously, Chase Elliott, the most popular driver. Who on the circuit now do you think is the closest 
to being a superstar, kind of like a Richard Petty, like a Dale, uh, Dale Sr. or Jeff Gordon? Well, I mean, if you're looking at just sheer numbers, Chase Elliott's on that path. He's got a championship now. He's very young. He's going to continue to add that resume. Joey Logano's got two championships a as well. But the thing is, he's got to, it goes beyond that, just a superstar. For Richard Petty, a Jeff Gordon, you've got to have that big charismatic personality. And I don't think NASCAR has that right now. You look at a Jeff Gordon. When NASCAR was at its zenith, Gordon had that personality. He's on Saturday Night Live. He's doing all these daytime talk shows. Who is that right now that's going to be that personality that's going to go on these shows and co-host and be a star. NASCAR's lacking that right now. NASCAR's got a lot of great drivers. Kyle Larson is a superstar in the sense that he's elite and he's recognizable, but who is that crossover star that people that don't even follow motorsports know and recognize? And right now, there really isn't one. That's a really great point. You got to supersede your own sport. And we're going to have more with you, Jordan, here in a little bit. But first, a Rookie of the Year contender has something to say. Uh, I mean, I don't think a lot because I've never been there. Yeah. It's the only one I've never been to oval-wise. Lots of firsts for rookie Carson Hosevar, and he's about to tackle another one when he takes on Loudon this weekend. Our sit-down and garage confidential is coming up when Around the Track continues. It's been a two-man race all season for Cup Series Rookie of the Year, Josh Berry, and this man, Carson Hosevar. Hosevar is in year one with Spire Motorsports at NASCAR's highest level, and he's continued to prove all of his doubters wrong, which is what we talked about in this week's Garage Confidential. I just want to talk a little bit, catch up, uh, talk about your rookie season so far. A lot of people are saying that you've kind of surprised them coming out of the, the gate in 2024. How do you feel about your season so far? Um, well, I felt like we've done a good job so far with um, what we've achieved. Um, you know, me and Luke Lambert, my crew chief, and even our spotter, Tyler Green, we're, we're like uh, super in sync with each other. And, and, you know, they've been a lot, part of the sport for a long time. They've dealt with rookies. They've dealt with, you know, Luke's gotten to the final four before so you know we knew what we wanted to achieve and, and that was just try and minimize the early rookie mistakes so you know our results are a little bit rocky at the start but um, you know we've been able to really start putting it together and because we didn't have a bunch of huge you know DNFs or you know mechanical failures or anything like that um, you know we're starting to reap the reward now and we're still kind of in the hunt for like a top 20 points finish which was ultimately I felt like my goal, which a lot of people's eyes went really wide when I said that, <laughs> but in my mind, I'm like, 20th isn't that great, but yeah. um, for where this team is and where most rookies finished, and you know, rookies that go on to win championships in top tier rides uh, are anywhere from 18th to 23rd on their rookie season. So that was kind of like 20th, oh, makes a lot of sense once you hear that stat. You were able to run in the Cup Series last year, get a get a couple of tracks under your belt. What's been the biggest learning curve this season as a full-time driver? I think it's ultimately knowing that every week matters. How you finish affects your qualifying the next week. It affects which group of practice you're in. <laughs> it affects um, your, your pit selection because if you don't qualify good, you get a crappier pit selection and if our car's not you know, super strong, it's hard to get those five, six back and then just five, lose five, six every stop. There's a lot of stops. You, you just keep bouncing back and into the field. And, you know, last year I t fully took advantage that the next week really didn't matter because, you know, I wasn't in points, but also too, um, you know, I was kind of in and out of the car. Um, you know, the, every once in a while they have somebody else planned when I was subbing. And um, so I could just go out there and race and learn if I made a mistake or something happened or I could be aggressive. I knew, Hey, it doesn't matter points why you, you don't get that in cup anymore. Yeah. Um, for me, I don't feel much like a rookie because I, I had so much go on last year just in those nine, 10 races yeah. that I had my own little mini crash course season of just having everything. But you are a rookie and rookie of the year is certainly on the table. I know for you, your name, Josh Berry's name has kind of been interchangeable in that conversation. How much of that is on the forefront of your mind this season? I would say it's in our mind, but still kind of at the back of it right now, just because, I mean, there's, it keeps bouncing back and forth. Yeah. Um, it's more like what you look at Monday or Tuesday when you look at the points. Um, you know, as we're racing, we're not racing just the four car, because if we were just racing him, you know, you'd get lost and then you get complacent with everything. So we just want to run as good as we can. And then we just happen to look like, oh, we're, you know, back in rookie layer points or, oh, we got to get a few on him and, and whatnot. You're preparing for Loudon right now. What do you think about that track? Uh, I mean, I don't think a lot because I've never been there. It's yeah. the only one I've never 
been to Oval-wise uh, on the Cup schedule, so it's really different for me on how I prepare because there's not a lot of notes I can really go off of. Um, but I'm not trying to over-prepare in the sense, like I'm just doing what I normally do um, as if I've already been there, like I'm already kind of just have an idea of what it's supposed to feel like, what it's supposed to do. There's a lot of guesses in my mind <laughs> uh, right now, but a lot of times I can kind of pick it up. And I think it was a lot harder um, going to racetracks not knowing a race car than it is not knowing a racetrack. So, you know, last year we're going to all these racetracks that I've been to a handful of times, but with a brand new race car and new right. race cars you're racing against versus, you know, knowing a car like the back of your hand, you know, you're comfortable it's your office every week and it's just a different scenery you've been a lot of fun to watch Carson Hosovar we appreciate it good luck in New Hampshire I appreciate it thank you Daniel Suarez is already locked into the 2024 playoffs and he's a former Xfinity Series champion but this week he gained another title you can find out what that is next and Martin Trex Jr. is the reigning winner here in New Hampshire but who will continue the winning ways in the 19 once MTJ retires at the end of the 2024 season got some picks and underdogs when around the track continues. Back here on around the track and a big congrats to Daniel Suarez, the driver of the 99 for track house racing, becoming an American citizen this week. A number of NASCAR delegates were there to cheer on Suarez, including NASCAR president Steve Phelps. Suarez came to America 12 years ago to pursue a career in racing and he's reached its most elite level. According to Daniel, hearing the national anthem before a race will hit a little bit different from now on. I realized around five years ago that I really wanted to, to become a citizen. Uh, but it's, it's time, you know, like 12 years ago, if you were asking me, hey, Daniel, are you going to be a USA citizen 12 years ago? I was going to tell you, man, I just want to speak English. <laughs> so, you know, one step is one step after the other. And, and I, I, all, my, my biggest advice would be just to work hard. How about a NASCAR shocker? Gene Haas is staying in the Cup Series. After all, the legendary tool manufacturer says he's keeping one NASCAR charter, owning one Cup Series team and two Xfinity Series teams in 2025. Now, last month, Stuart Haas Racing, which he owns with NASCAR Hall of Famer Tony Stewart, said it was closing down the shop and selling all four of its charters. One has already gone to Front Row Motorsports. The other two available are still up for grabs. No word on which of the SHR drivers that he'll retain, if any, of them at all. The new team's name is going to be Haas Factory Team. And that news, of course, has thrown quite the wrench into silly season, especially because we know the 19 for Joe Gibbs Racing is now open as well. That's right. Martin Truex Jr. leaving the Cup Series at a full-time capacity. So here's the fun part, speculating <laughs> about who's going to take that coveted <laughs> ride. And with every SHR driver being a free agent at the season's end, it's Kind of easy to say that Chase Briscoe is the front runner here. No, Gregson, also another SHR driver, is looking for a home. And he's already got Bass Pro Shops as a sponsor. He's also been in the Toyota camp before. So maybe an easy transition game. Yeah, well, let's go into the wild cards, though. Kyle Busch has stated multiple times he's committed to making RCR a winner. But could a reunion with Coach Gibbs be in the cards? And, of course, you have an Xfinity program for a reason. Chandler Smith went into the weekend second overall in the series, while Sheldon, Sheldon Creed isn't far behind in six. So of course, we see the guys there. They're also some other names as well. Jordan, who do you think takes over in that 19 car? Well, let's just settle all of the speculation right now. <laughs> I would put all my money on Chase Briscoe. I would be yeah. shocked if it's not Chase Briscoe. He's been the leading candidate for a while now. Um, this was part of it, as we reported a week ago at The Athletic. Chase Briscoe is the leading candidate. He's going to be that driver in the 19 car. Smart move for Joe Gibbs Racing. They're getting a very young, talented driver. Somebody who can give them immediate results as he's got the experience and also build that runway long term and potentially give him another building block to build it, continue with that organization long term. Yeah, JGR just getting younger and younger nope. every year. But let's talk about who gets that win in New Hampshire this weekend. And does Vegas, do they agree with us? The race odds and our victory lane locks are next. All right, Vegas has officially spoken. Here's who they think will take the checkered flag in New Hampshire. These odds, of course, are courtesy of DraftKings. We got a three-way tie at the top with three former winners at this track. Martin Trex Jr., Denny Hamlin, and Christopher Bell, all with 9-2 to two odds. Then you have Ryan Blaney, who just won at Iowa, and Kyle Larson rounded out the top five, both with 13-2 to two odds to take the checkered flag. So those are the picks coming from Sin City. Time for our selections. Jordan, 
<laughs> I'm going off the board a little bit. I'm going to go oh. with Joey Logano. Okay. Um, you look at what I mentioned earlier in the show. Logano and Team Penske have really kind of come into their own. Logano won at Newton, or North Wilkesboro. Uh, Ryan Blaney won at uh, Iowa. Austin Sindrick won at Gateway. Those tracks are very similar to New Hampshire. Team Penske is getting better. Ford is getting better. I think Logano breaks through and gets that first win of the year. They're kind of on the rise. They Team are. Penske very much. Whole. Very much. Yeah. Yeah, Ford's picking up this the scene. Well, I'm going with Christopher Bell, a guy who's got it done. One of the young guns who's got it done at this track. Won at both levels. I think obviously going for that third win of the season, looking to join that club where so many other drivers already are already are so far. Of course, three wins in Xfinity and New Hampshire has a one cup win as well. So I like C Bell. Toys and for uh, the Fords and Toyotas have really gotten it done here. So I like C Bell to get it done. Bell is so fast here yeah. every year consistently. That is a great pick. All right. I'm going with a hard pick in this one. <laughs> I mean it's kind of a Vegas pick too, but after his announcement yeah. that he's retiring at the end of the season, also a little bit of history, right? Because he won here just last season. But give me MTJ on race day. He's in the top five in points currently. And I think, I don't know. I just, I think we all want to see him get Absolutely. locked in with a win. Right, Jordan? I, this is a good track for him. As you said, he won here a year ago and should have won. Honestly, there's a couple of races here that have gotten away from him over the years. This is a great racetrack for him. He is overdue this year. We've mentioned him a lot in the show throughout the course of this year. He's going to get a win. Why not here at New Hampshire where he's won before? All right, well, that'll do it for us on Around the Track. Enjoy the race at Loudon. We'll see you next week ahead of Nashville.